So moving on to reason number three, our last reason. We are making space for people to grow in servanthood. I think Steve, you've already touched on that a little bit, but Andrew, you want to just dig into that for us? Yeah, I think just to remind you, you know, we've done a, a, a series of uh, sermons a while back. You know, how does Jesus touch his life? Through us. It's not just the pastor, it's not the board, it's through everyone. And when we create this second service, it's almost like there's new space to be filled by people. And at the end of the day, our life being called into the kingdom of God is not just for our sake, it's for others to love God and to love others. And how do we love others? Serving them. We are all leaders when we serve them. We are not just the leaders here. All of you are called to lead by being servants of God. So with this kind of a vacuum that is there, and you are here, that you can just exercise your servanthood leadership. So in the next uh, two months, we're gonna touch on uh, some uh, challenges to uh, create new spaces for them, for people who will be coming. So we're going to give a little bit of challenge in the coming month about giving of our resources as well as asking you to participate in serving Jesus. I think it's really inspiring to get on board on a church that is really clear on its mission. And I understand the whole thing about, you know, we are planted here for them. Uh, we are here to bless them. But what about caring for the people who are already here? As we're pouring out ourselves for them, how are we caring for the people who are here? Well, this is exactly what we do. Because the whole discipleship pathway that we have is for all of us to grow closer to Jesus and encouraging one another to grow closer together. That's why the pathway of the five years. And I think it's important for us to also recognize that at the end of the day, we are not here just so that we can get what we want, to get our life fulfilled here. We will never be able to fulfill your need, but you know who can? Jesus. We want to develop a life that is Jesus-shaped, cross-bearing life to serve other people. And we don't want people here to, to be consumers. You don't want to be here just because you want to consume. You want, here, you want to be here because you want to see God living in and through you with His power and His Holy Spirit. And we don't want spectators. We want to be seeing all of you to be in the game. Yes. So, yeah. exercise your servant. Yeah. Yeah. More blessed to give than to receive. Yeah. So some of the uh, practical things that we are putting into place for next year is number one, we're going to be expanding our small group platform. So I mean, you've heard me pitching this morning about group life and joining a group, I and mean, we mean it, get into a small group, because as we get bigger, we need to get smaller, which means we need to all be in a small group where people, um, where you're in a group where you can be mutually encouraged and cared for. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to expand our volunteer base, right? The more hands on the tail, the more the workload gets spread out. The third thing we're going to do is we're going to improve and increase our volunteer care initiatives. That means now, nothing is written in stone, but there may be some volunteers who will be here from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. They may be serving together with their spouses, if it's a two-parent home, and that means their kids have to be here from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. How are we going to care for these volunteers? We've got some plans in place, but those are the kinds of practical things that we're plan thinking about. How can we care for our highly valued volunteers and their families? And the fourth thing we're going to do is, of course, we're increasing our, uh, are increasing our worship service options, obviously, which means because once in a while, you know, there's a family lunch or there's a hockey game first thing in the morning and it makes it hard to come to worship service at, at the 11 o'clock uh, time. So, you know, we're increasing these worship options so that you can be cared for, so that you can have a, a fine time, be able to make it to worship service. So those are some of the practical things we're doing. Now, 